Yabba dabba, let's do this. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is Monday, the first day of August. What we do on this show, we focus in on OTC and penny stocks that got potential. It's just that simple. We may get it from the charts, technicals. We may get it from listening to the buzz on internet. We may get it from scoping out the news. Now, this is news I personally have looked at. It's not a news feed. I'm just sharing it with you. Over the last few days, maybe six days, including the weekend, oldest is on the top, newest is down here at the bottom. Now, we do look at penny stocks too. This is only OTC news, and penny stocks are any stock under $5 regardless of what market they're sold on. And there's a bunch of those on the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange. So we will look at those. Now we're over here at the otcmarkets.com website. This is my go-to site whenever I do research on an OTC stock, simply because it's never outdated. It saves me a lot of time and a lot of hassle. FINRA and the SEC update this site for every single OTC stock every single day. Why waste your time going out searching every single day when you can find it here? just like that. So let's take a look at the OTC market and how she fared today. Not real good actually. We've kind of gone back to a sad average. Our dollar volume has come back to our average, 2.1 billion. Last week we had a low of 1.4 billion and worked our way back up. Our trades, well, we've been stuck between 250 and 300,000. We fell down to almost 200,000 last week, and now we're back to like average, low average. And our share volume is pathetic. Folks, it was about five weeks ago, maybe, that we hit our floor on our volume for the OTC. 4.2 billion, I think it was, and that is after a year of falling. Not bouncing and falling, just falling. And then we bounced, and we got all the way up to over 15 billion shares. We were trying to stay above 10 billion there for a while, but now it seems like we want to stay under 10 billion. It is sad, folks. We need volume on our bloody market bad. So I have got three very curious stocks to share with you today. Not our normal look at, but I think you're going to get something from these. Let me show you what I got. This first stock we're taking a look at, it's an oxymoron, folks. No doubt about it, absolutely, positively. This is ticker RVIC, Retail Value Inc. She finished today at 34 and a half cents with a whopping 147% gains. She's on the pink tier and current, has no verified profile, has no verified transfer agent, and I don't believe they're gonna be getting them anytime soon or anytime at all. They are also a self-proclaimed shell company. This means they don't have any business, so they're not making any money. And I say the same thing. I don't expect they will ever do that again. Here it is, folks. They didn't have any news come out today. They didn't have any tweets come out today. But they had a couple filings come out in the last six weeks, maybe. They've had a couple. And it was bad news for the company. Really bad news. But they've got good news sitting on the table for the shareholders. As they're going bye-bye, they're giving away free money. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Not huge, but an increase, what, four or five times, somewhere around there, 161,000 to 1.3 million. But still, you got 147% gains off of it. Share structure, what kind of float we got? I always go to the unrestricted shares to get my float. You can normally grab a float number on these sites, but it's either outdated or just plain wrong. So I trust the unrestricted shares. It's as close as you're going to get to the float. I went and looked this one up, 14 million. Not a bad float for this company. Financials. This is where it gets a little confusing, right? You can see they've been making money. This is at the end of last year. You got to take three zeros and put it behind here. That's $55 million they did at the end of last year, and they got to keep $33 million of it. Then when you look at their quarterly, first quarter of this year, they did $2.2 million, and now there's nothing. The last quarter in June, absolutely nothing. They are going bye-bye. Disclosures. This is where all the story is at. Now, they've got a lot of disclosures here from different times, and I could get confused jumping into them, but I've already pulled the ones out that I want to share with you. So this one here is an 8K that came out June 30th. And they tell us here that on June 30th, 2022, Retail Value Inc. filed a certificate of dissolution. The certificate of dissolution provides for the dissolution of the company. The company will continue to exist for a period of five years 
following the filing of the certificate of dissolution for the purpose of paying, satisfying, discharging any unknown or contingent claims or any debts or any other obligations, collecting and distributing its assets, distributing its assets, and doing all other acts required to liquidate and wind up its business and affairs. Then we've got another one over here. This came out on June 29th. Retail Value Inc. declared a special cash distribution on the company's common shares of $1.16. Now, this was on the 29th. They tell us here that this was going to be payable on July 27th. Now, that's already happened. It did happen. They gave $1.16 for every share you owned of this company. Now, we just looked at the price. It was $0.34. Cents. No, it didn't take a fall down to 34. That's a jump, 147%. It was roughly 12, 13 cents a share. And they gave everybody who owned a share $1.16. And if you had 100 shares, you got $116. If you had 1,000 shares, you got $1,160. That's what got everybody excited. And you're going, big deal, John. It's over. You just said they gave all that money away. You're absolutely right. I did. So I found this one and this came out the next day. It says, in addition, let me open this up so you can see this. In addition to the special distribution on June 29th and subject to uncertainties inherent in winding up its business, the company expects to make one or more small cash distributions to shareholders in the future as expenses and any claims against the company are satisfied, resolved, or fail to materialize. And so far, they're telling us what they're doing. The company has completed the sale of all of its real estate holdings and is in the process of winding up its business. Now, I did some poking around over there at Twitter and one guy was doing the math and he was he knows more about the company than I do and he was saying well if they sell this asset and this asset we can look at anywhere from 60 cents to a dollar for every share we own and the shares right now are 34 cents and rising fast because people like free money this isn't a dividend it's going to be cash given to you now I don't know exactly how they do it. If it goes straight to your trade broker's account or they send you a check, I'm not quite sure. But does it matter? It's free money. So let's go take a look at that chart and see where it's going because it doesn't look like it's about ready to stop yet. That is a six-month, four-hour chart for RVIC being displayed on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. You can have it. No, no, not mine. <laughs> Go over to TD Ameritrade, sign up for their free trading account, just keep your account open, you can use Thinkorswim anytime you want, absolutely free. Now folks, looking at that chart, I love it. That is a perfect chart. Look, we've got the low bubble right up against the wall, and all the way up here in this top corner today, we have our high bubble. It doesn't get any better, it has been riding up. Not great, but it is riding up. Now our high today hit almost 40 cents, 39.999. Look at the low here. Maybe you can't see that, but it's ridiculous. It doesn't exist. It says it is minus 38 cents. What's that? What's minus 38 cents? What sort of charting system were they using back then? I don't know. It doesn't really matter. What I do want to point out is you can see how flat she was going here. No activity whatsoever. And then we had a jump here and it has been climbing since and really shot today. You want to take a guess what day this is? That's right, Amy. That is June 29th and June 30th. Those filings we just read. So did everybody else. And it has been running since then. This is one month that has gone from eight cents up to 40 cents. You're looking at roughly 500% gains. Though most of it was today, no doubt about that. But oh my God, look at our PPO, our percentage price oscillator. This is like the MACD, but it works on the percentage gains of the price rather than the price itself. And that's taken a serious drop. I mean, that's really strong shows a strong trend of climbing right now. Our MACD is just ripping and RSI is in the overbought. It really looks good and I don't understand the PPO at all. Let's come down to the 20 day one hour, see if it makes more sense. So the price is sitting on the 50 day here. You can see she's riding it very calmly across the board. And then today it just shot up and I'm not seeing this drop here. 
Now let me see if I can come in on, because that PPO looks too flat to be real. Let's see what we can get here. Uh, one more time. All right, so it is on top. Boy, oh boy, barely. So we have a strong trend. This shows that the trend has been continuing in the direction that it's been going. Up, up, up. Looks good. MACD, we got a tsunami. Still in overbought on the RSI. Everything looks good. This is weird, though. That's kind of weird. Coming down to that five-day, five-minute view. Again, not a whole lot of activity for the days before. Today, she took off and ripped. My God, she ran most of the day. This takes it all the way to 2.30 in the afternoon, where she did finally give up something, hit the 20, and looks like she's going to respect the 20. Looks like she's going to hang on to that and start rising again. The volume has fallen off very much. There's a normal PPO. Looks like we've got a crossover here. It could bounce off that pink and go back up. No doubt about that either. Our MACD is falling. The price eh, was falling with it, right? And our RSI is in the low 50s. It looks like it's taking a break. Looks like people got their profits, you know, a bunch of people got out. But you know, folks, we're not just looking at this for the run. Although there's a very good likelihood this could still get more. Let's face it, if the stock is 34 cents and people are out there tweeting that you're going to get 60 cents to a dollar for every share you own, and you get to keep the shares. It's not like they're taking your shares. They're not buying them from you. You get to keep your shares and get this money. So the cheaper you can get them, the more money you're making, right? So I think that's really what this is all about. Building up your holdings just to cash in on the dividends, but they haven't told us what they're going to be or when they're going to be. Remember, they're going to be around for the next five years. Now, I don't know if that's full five years or as long as they can last up to five years. But in either case, that's going to give them time to keep selling off stuff, getting rid of assets. And as stockholders, shareholders, we are privy to those assets. So they are dispersed amongst all of us. You might as well be in there as well. Our next stock is Houston Natural Resources, ticker HNRC. Now, this company did have a news press that came out today. They told us about their earnings that came out two days ago, and they were good earnings. It was good news, but I think it's more about what they reiterated in this news press. They had a news press come out at the beginning of July where they told all their shareholders about something they were going to do that was going to benefit them. And they talked about that in this news press today, but they also added something else to it. And I think that's going to get people excited because the stock isn't running right now. It was climbing. For the last two days, it's gone sideways, consolidating. But the technicals look like they're just about ready to move. And that could really be a big punch in this stock price. So she finished today at 47 cents, roughly 4% gain. She's on the pink tier in current, and she's got both green ticks over here. I'm always telling you to look for Looks good. They tell us that the company is a diversified holdings company that works with state-of-the-art innovative technologies in tandem with oil field waste disposal and recycling that are environmentally safe and socially responsible. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Very light, as I expected. We barely do 300,000 shares a day as it is. Today we did almost 800,000. Share structure, hey, we got a low float. How about that? We're at 17 million, just a smidge above it. 17 million would be fine and dandy when this thing starts to move. Financials, what kind of money are they making? Well, they are making money. They did 18 million at the end of last year, got to keep about 7 million of that. And quarterly, yeah, they're still there. 3.5 million the first quarter, and the news press today is about the second quarter. So we're not going to see that here. But you will see it over in the disclosures right there, 729. And we could jump in and read this, but the news press has more information, believe it or not, at least the kind we're looking for. And they've got no other sec filings here. So let's jump on over to that news. Now, they got lots of news over here, but we're only interested in two of them. The one that came out on July 6th and the one that came out today. The one that came out July 6th, HNRC to spin off non-energy assets to shareholders. Houston Natural Resources announced today that it will spin off its non-energy assets to its wholly owned subsidiary, Worldwide Diversified Holdings, Inc., and then dividend them to its shareholders. 
Worldwide Diversified Holdings has audited statements and will provide for a listing later this year. So it's going to happen this year. The dividend record date will be announced during the third quarter, which we're just approaching now. The dividend date is it's a, it's the last date that you can buy shares up to. You've got to have your shares bought up to that date. After that date, anything you buy won't be qualifying. The company is anticipating an initial trading price of $5 per share to provide for the company to list on the major exchange and receive additional capital. The transaction will provide for a dividend of $1.75 of a WDHI share for every one share of HNRC you hold. Now, What this really breaks down to roughly is one share of WDHI for every three shares of HNRC. So that's how it breaks down. And then they go ahead and they tell us what they're going to do with that extra money, acquisitions, and they're trying to uplist to the QB from the pink. Then you've got today's news. Now this is more about their earnings than anything else, but as I said, they reiterated what we just looked at. First off, they tell us that the company's second quarter revenues for the first six months of this year are up 41% compared to the same period last year. And the company's net earnings have gone up 38% for the same period comparison. Now they tell us that the company's assets have increased and that has now made the value of the shares $2.43. That's what they say. We're up here at 47 cents. They say that the net asset value is 243 per share for the period ending June 30th, 2022. And then down here, they reiterate everything we just got done reading. Put it right back in the faces of the people. So the third quarter is when they're going to announce that date, which you're going to need if you want to buy shares to get a hold of the dividends from the uplisting, which is going to happen this year. Now, as I said, the charts don't look hot today, but they look ready to get hot. So let's go take a look at it. Well, of course, we're looking at a six-month, four-hour chart for HNRC. We got a high bubble back here six months ago of $1.25 and a low bubble a month ago of about $0.15, cents, and right now we're at $0.47. Cents. She has been under the 200 predominantly all this time. She tried to break through once here without much success, hit that low bubble, had a jump here on the day, July 6th. So this was her first initial jump, but people didn't do a whole lot with it, did they? I mean, it was big news that they were going to spin out a company and they were going to give the shareholders free dividends. So you had a jump there, and I'm sure that jump is pretty good in size. It just looks small. Let's see. It went from uh, 15 cents up to, it was a 100% jump. That's all they got out of that. Then it gave away, looks like about 50% of it. And over the last six days, it has been climbing. It's gone from about 20 cents all the way up here to a high of 60 cents. So you got 300% gains there in four days. And as I said, she's been going sideways for the last two days. Our technicals, our PPO has got the blue over top way up high. It is even right now. It's not falling. Our trend has been climbing for a while. It looks like it is trying to pull back a little bit. Our MACD is pretty strong, but again, everything looks like it's just pulling back. But we've had two days and not a whole lot going on. 20-day, one-hour view. We had a poke through the 200 there, and she fell right down to the 50-day. Lost it. Got back on the 50, and then like I said, these last few days she took off and then went sideways. And she had some strong growth there. I mean, it was very steady. Over the three days, she did go from 20 cents to 60 cents and is going sideways. Technicals look like they're cooling off right now, but all of the SMAs look good. We just don't have a very good sitting for the price. Five day, five minute. So there's your climb. Lots of ups and downs. Boy, some big drops before she takes off again. Huge drops. Came all the way back down to the 200 here, which has just come into our five-day picture. She hit it. She's been fighting it. She's actually looking like she's going to fall through it. She's doing everything she can to stay up there near the SMAs. The two, well, they're all there right now, folks. Every single SMA is right there. So it's tough to tell who has control, except to say... It's following the 10, of course. Now, our technicals. I said things look like they're about ready to turn. They're on the low right now. We've had two days of not a whole lot going on. Our PPO is under the pink. We don't want to see it there. 
It was falling. We can see the huge fall here, and we have a little bit of push up right there. That could be the start of a turnaround. Our trend is still showing that it has been going up. This could continue for us. MACD is low, but again, it was falling and is now broke and is starting to do more sideways than fall. And our RSI is climbing. This looks like it has the potential to break out, folks. That's what I'm saying. There's a lot of good news on the table, and it seems like people are starting to pay attention to it. There was a rise for three days. Now we've had a two-day grace period. There could be some more coming. Watch the volume on HNRC and watch for the news. They're going to be reporting that date that you have to have your shares bought by if you want to get the dividend. And here's something most people don't know. Once that date comes and goes, you buy all your shares, your 1,000 shares are qualified. The next day, anything you buy doesn't count. Well, did you know the next day you could sell those 1,000 shares you just bought, get all your money back, and still you qualify for the dividend. You don't have to hold the shares until they give you the dividend. You just have to have the shares at the time that date closes. That's what goes on record. Whatever happens afterwards, they have no idea because they're not watching. So you can sell your shares after the dividend date and still qualify for your dividend. Finally, the last stock we're taking a look at, and I've been waiting to share this one with you. This is ticker AGSS, AmeriGuard Security Services. Now, I stumbled upon this over at Twitter, and it caught my interest, and I started doing some research and got real excited because to me, it looks like it's going to be a 10-bagger. looks like it's going to go at 10 times from that price. That's my opinion. Now, the more research I did, the more frustrated I was also getting because I could not find as much information as I was hoping to find. But there was good reason for that. This company just got this ticker in March. And whatever the old ticker was, it's been dormant since 2014. But this is not a startup company. They've been in business for over 22 years and they're doing about $23 million worth of business from the tidbits I picked up all around today. So I do like what I see with this company, but I couldn't find as much information as I wanted. But I'm going to share with you what I found and I'm going to let you decide. Now, one thing you've noticed already is that they're part of home security. They work with home security with every avenue you can imagine. Your doors, your windows, your lights, your doorbell, your air conditioning. They got a phone app that reminds you if you're away from home that you can lock your doors from here. All sorts of things. But they do other contracts as well, which is really where they make their big money. And that's what people are really excited about. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, not a lot. They're normally doing 7,000 shares a day. Today, she did 45,000 shares. That's the definition of under the radar. Nobody is noticing this stock, folks. What is the share structure? Oh, this is another piece of juicy news. Look at that share structure, folks. Look at the float, unrestricted. 2.2 million shares. And there's a good reason for that. When they came onto the market in March, they also did a 1 and 20 reverse split. You and I get the benefit now of a super duper low float, just over 2 million. Financials, you're not going to have anything there. Disclosures. Well, we do have some disclosures, and I do want to share one with you, and I got it right here. This is an 8K that came out on March 11th, right? Everything I've been telling you. On March 11th, Health Revenue Assurance Holdings amended its Articles of Incorporation to change its name to AmeriGuard Security Services. The change was made in anticipation of entering a new line of business. Also on March 11th, 2022, the company amended its Articles of Incorporation to enact a reverse split of 1 to 20. That was authorized and done. Also on March 17th, the company was informed by Fiener that the company's tinker would be changed to AGSS, and all of that has happened. So jumping on over to their website, they do tell us that they work with residential security, commercial security, defense contractor, and I'm going to dive more into that one. But I wanted to let you know that the residential security, their commercial security, this isn't just about the technical gadgets, all that stuff you saw in the video. No, they actually have live response teams that drive around in cars. If you have a situation, their response time is like seven minutes to get to you. Police don't normally get there within hours, so they have a great reputation 
protection. Some of their guards are armed, some of them aren't. It all depends on what they are protecting. If you go on vacation or you have a construction site, they will guard that for you too. So they do a lot, they actually do everything. But as I said, what is most important as far as I'm concerned and everybody else is concerned is their defense contracts. They are working with our government. They are working with them in big ways. Now, these are actual contracts that they have got with the government. All these different military bases that they are providing security for. Imagine that. They're trusted to that extent. And then down here, government facilities. Uh, Department of Health and Human Services, they've got a few of those. Department of Veteran Affairs, they got a whole bunch of those. And these are nice, huge contracts. And I don't know where it is. As I said, I couldn't find all the information I wanted. But Twitter, someone said that there was a deal made at the end of July that was worth $5.5 million. And if you come over here to security details, you can see the market cap is only $4.2 million on this stock. So that one contract exceeds the entire value of this company right now. And that's because of that low share count. That's what's keeping it down. Now, this is some other information that I found. I'm just going to pass it off on to you. I couldn't connect all the dots, but I want you to see what I saw. Now, all this information I found over at Twitter. I love going to Twitter. I certainly learn a lot here. But it's not like I take it all for gospel. I just don't take their word for anything. I do use it as a lead. But if you don't know what you're looking for, what keyword you're going to put into Google. So at least they give me the keywords here. Now, the thing about these tweets is they say some things that I haven't been able to find information on. So maybe you'll have better luck than I do. So I've got a few tweets here from I Like BB Stock and I got two tweets from Jeff. They tell us, AGSS added, we're going to rock and roll soon when we uplist. This is a huge deal. Russell Hanor is in charge of the security at the U.S. Capitol, and he is on board. And another 5.5 million contract was announced at the end of July, and it in itself is higher than the current market cap at 4.2 million. The next tweet we have from I Like BB Stock. AGSS will be at least a $30 to $40 stock once uplisted. Name change happened in March. Quiet period is going to be ending soon. Uplist is imminent. Then we get one here from Jeff. When these guys finally come out, we may see one of the biggest low float squeezes in history. AGSS got a contract on Friday, and it alone was more than the market capitalization on Friday of 4.1. 10 times the market cap from here is still cheap. That's only nearly one times the revenue. And the last tweet we got to look at, another one from Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. I'm still in disbelief that our board members at AGSS are in charge of the security now at the Capitol. He was handpicked for the job. Boy, we live in a great country, and companies like AGSS will continue to keep it as safe as possible. Thank you, Lawrence Garcia. Lawrence Garcia is one of the management. Right there he is. This is an interview you can find over at YouTube. It is about, let's see what we got here, 10 minutes long. It came out March 29th, just after they got the ticker. Their plans have gone on there. Now, they talk about a lot of stuff here, and I got to tell you, folks, they're dropping all the right stuff. They're talking about acquisitions. They're talking about expansion. They're talking about taking their revenues from 20 million to 500 million. They made a reference to Tyco, who they said went from 50 million to billions of dollars. So they have lots of plans. They said they want to expand, not just into security, but maybe other things too. That's what they were leading to. But hey, don't take my word for it. Watch the video. All right, let's go take a look at that chart and see where it is going. It didn't have a lot of volume today. Very interesting chart for AGSS. A couple things are quite curious here. First thing I notice is that high bubble of $7.60 all the way back in January. Now, why is that curious to me? Remember I told you this company's been dormant since 2014. So what the heck were they investing in? They weren't doing anything, and it's up there at $7.60. The next thing I find curious is right there, just before that big drop. That is March 11th. That's the date that AGSS got a hold of this ticker. And two days later, boom, 
drops the bottom right out of it. And I mean, that was a big fall, folks. I think like almost 500%. She went from uh, $3.42 down to 51 cents. That is huge. She went sideways for about seven days, eight days, and then had a complete full recovery. Wouldn't you have liked to have been on that side of that? She did try to break the 200, but then has been falling ever since then until today. Today, we finally got some push up on top of the 50 on the four hour, pushing to the 200 without any new words, no catalyst filings or news presses. Our technicals, hey, our PPO has just now crossed the pink line and is pushing up. We got a strong ADX. MACD has just hit the signal line. It's also on top, and our RSI is in the low 60s. Looks pretty good. 20 day, one hour view. So she's not only been under the 200, she's been under the 50. Just falling, 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 hit a low bubble here, bounce back up, but just continued her fall until today when she ripped again without any real reason that we can see. Technicals are great. I mean, these are just absolutely outstanding. Everything is pushing up. You can't lose if your oscillators are pointing up. You just can't lose. Five day, five minute. There's nothing going on for the last few days. We had a little bit of ripple started in the last two days. You know, it was pretty much flat. We got a little ripple, and then today she just took off. She climbed here from $1.52 up to $2.34, and she hit that high at 11.15. That was a nice long run with only one little dip right there. She did pull back here, and she has landed on the 20-day SMA. And, of course, you can see she is far above her 50% gains. I like to draw a line at the top and the bottom of a surge and then draw one in the middle. Find that center, close enough will be good enough. And as long as it is above that center line, you've got a good gain. Chances are she's going to hang out at that level, this new channel, and could continue on. But if she comes underneath this, there's a very strong likelihood she's going to fall down to one of the next SMAs, if not further. Our technicals, our PPO is a little balanced right now. It could go either way. The ADX is showing that the trend has changed. MACD is falling, but you can see the price isn't really falling. It's kind of like that. It's getting wider. It's getting a gap, which shows there could be a gain uh, profits to come. And RSI, eh, it's in the low 50s. Not looking real good. So it is under the radar, folks. There's no filings. There's no press releases right now. There's no words to stimulate us. All we got are speculations. But we've also got a super low float. And with that float, this thing can rock it. So put AGSS on your watch list, folks. Not just for the charts, but for the news and for filings. You don't want to see this thing running and then see the news. You want to see the news and catch the run. So what do you think? I brought you some trick-or-treats, didn't I? You've got free money there. You've got dividends. You've got spin-outs. We've got potential. I showed you stocks that have not already run but are preparing to run and have good reason to run. All it's needing now is for you to do some DD yourself and be sold on the ones I've just shown you. Don't just trust what I said. Don't just trust what they say at Twitter. Trust your own DD. It's your money. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.